Welcome to the Jill on Money podcast. It is Thursday, April 8th. And uh, this is the program where we attempt to provide you with some unconventional and hopefully entertaining insights on your money and your life. I am Jill Schlesinger. My day job is I am the CBS News business analyst. And as such, sometimes I do segments on television that I think you guys would also very much enjoy. So earlier this week, I was asked to focus on this concept that so many people are ready to restart their retirement savings. And, you know, it's always tough because there's a lot of people who are living really skinny right now, meaning that they maybe they've lost their jobs or they've lost hours. And I understand that, but still the savings rate is quite high. And so it's such a great time to focus on retirement, to rebooting your retirement. I wanted to start the segment in a way that everyone could really access it. So this is maybe if you're the kind of person who needed to take a break from retirement, or maybe you just want to use this podcast and send it to your kids who want to know how to get started, anyone like that, I highly recommend this segment. This is from CBS This Morning, earlier this week, Retirement Reboot. Here we go. In today's Eye on Money, we are looking at a few easy ways to build up your retirement savings. Research shows that before the pandemic, about 85% of Americans had at least some form of savings for retirement, but due to financial strains this past year, One survey found 27% of people stopped saving or reduced their savings. With more companies now hiring and more people finding jobs, many Americans are able to start thinking about saving for retirement once again. And so we go now to CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger, who joins us for more on all this. Jill, I love this segment because we're doing it very simple step by step. And step one is, how do you begin to start saving for retirement? You start small and you increase incrementally. And when I mean start small, if you work for a company, you can put just 1% of your pay into the retirement plan. This may actually work out to maybe 20 or 25 bucks per pay period, but you start there. And what's really great is that some plans allow you to automatically increase that, but maybe you could automatically increase it. See how it goes. Look, the limit for a 401k or a 403b this year, it's $19,500. $19,500. Many people are not going to get to, to that maximum level. If you're over the age of 50, you can put up to 26000 So you can do one of those types of plans and get really far. Alternatively, you could maybe, if you don't work for a big company and doesn't have a retirement plan, you can start an IRA. You can go up to 6000 in an IRA, 7000 if you're over 50. And again, you could start really small. Most of the investment companies out there allow you to use small dollars to fund these plans. Do something, start small, go slowly. So people hearing these different acronyms, how can they decide which plan is the right plan for them and their lives? I think that normally what I th- is really the path of least resistance is if your company or your organization offers some sort of retirement where they can pull money directly from your paycheck, that's the easiest way to go. We know that people save more for retirement when they work for those organizations that allow you to do so. Now, for others, again, a lot of companies don't actually offer these plans. You could use an IRA or a Roth IRA. Big difference between these two plans is just when you get a tax benefit. If you use a regular traditional IRA, that gives you a tax benefit today. You save your whole career. When you're age 59 and a half, you can access that money. When you take it out later, it gets taxed. With the Roth version, you don't get any tax benefit today, but later when you take the money out, no taxes due. So these are all great options. Use what, again, is the easiest for you. Many of the big houses out there, they do make it a lot easier today than they did in the past. I've always heard you say, Jill, that everybody should have an emergency fund. Easier said than done these days. Two questions about that. How much should be in your emergency fund, number one? And number two, should it be separate from your retirement fund? I'm going to start with the second part, absolutely separate from your retirement account. And here's why. What we know is that when people put money into their retirement, we want that 
tax benefit to accrue to them. If you have to go into that account because there's an emergency and pull the money out before you're age 59 and a half, you could be subject to a penalty and you have to pay taxes. Now, as terms of how much, here's the really good news of the pandemic. The savings rate has gone sky high. It's amazing to see. And what we're hoping for is people use the experience of having a little bit of extra money. Maybe it's a tax refund. Maybe it's a stimulus check. You're trying to get six to 12 months of your living expenses mm. in an account that's accessible to you. I know that's mm. hard to do, yeah. but I yeah, really think it's important. We learned that lesson last year. We really did. Jill, that is hard. It, we've got about 30 seconds left. I am curious if you do have to pull money from retirement, because a lot of people do, uh, what's the smart way to do it? Well, if you did it last year, the CARES Act gives you a lot of benefits. So first of all, if you withdrew money last year from a retirement account, you've got three years, three tax years to pay that tax bill. So that's huge news. If you borrowed from your account, there were much more generous rules applied through the CARES Act. Talk to your employer, get that repayment started, and do the best you can. Again, little bit at a time. Habits are hard to form, easy to break. I love that episode. And it was interesting because right after the episode aired, I got a wonderful email from someone who watched it. And uh, Julie had written to me and said that she's had significant life events. And so she really feels qualified to talk about how those small changes, those incremental savings can really help. And she said that she really was able to cobble together a retirement that is pretty darn good. And she writes, despite far more setbacks than any family should have endured. And I think that that's really the key here. We want you all to understand that you have different means and different opportunities. We understand that. But each of us has the opportunity, hopefully, to put a tiny bit of money, just a little bit away, every single pay period, a little bit. You'd be shocked at how much a $20 contribution can mean over the course of a year, over the course of a decade, over the course of a lifetime of work. So I hope that you take this to heart uh, and advise anyone you know who is having a hard time, pass this podcast along. It's really helpful. It really means a lot to us when you guys are the the way that we grow this podcast. And, and it, it's fantastic. So again, we want to thank you for listening every single day. Uh, we also remind you to wash your hands, to wear your masks, to maintain your physical distancing, and to put your hands metaphorically on someone's back today. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.